And then if you talk with their parents, they may be used to Western culture and their parents may not. So you may need to remind yourself of those things as well. Their parents may react to you differently than the children do as well. It gets very complicated, but it's important. Now, most of you are in schools right in this area, is that right? Okay. We don't have a lot of cultural diversity in this area. You may have noticed that. We do have some. One of those is the Amish culture in um, Arthur. And I don't know a lot about the Amish culture. And I did some research before I came, but I didn't find as much as I would have liked. So I've um, suggested that maybe somebody that knows could tell you a little more. So. I'll tell you a little bit about that. Just to notice, and it's kind of mirroring, because as she t talked about how much of the culture, you'll have some that are very strict Amish, and they don't have some that are not. So you have to be aware of their body language when they're doing this. But if we are in an Amish child, they may not raise their hand to offer that they know the answer, but they may know the answer, and if you call them, they'll give that. So they consider that a forthright of bragging that I know versus I know, and if you want me to do that, I'll respond respectfully. So just be aware of that, of that cultural impact that they may not be doing this thing, like mm -hmm. a typical classroom, they may know. And I can also tell you, I have a very introverted son, the same thing. Mm -hmm. He often knew things, but unless specifically asked, he would not offer that. So just be aware of differences in people. Thanks for Good. And sometimes as a teacher, sometimes as a teacher, especially if the culture is the same as yours, you can tell by facial expressions that they know an answer when they won't raise their hand. Um, so you can, you can also use some of the other nonverbal cues as well to help you understand that. But thank you for that point as well, to remind <coughs> us again that we can't ever pigeonhole people and say that all nonverbal communication is the same. Posture is also um, something that you might notice. Slouching is very rude in some areas. Uh, sitting with legs crossed, I don't know that this will um, become particularly important to you, but I do know I was up in Madison, Wisconsin this summer, and there were persons uh, who were um, from Japan who, uh, they were all males, and to watch them greet one another was very interesting because uh, you could always tell who the oldest person was because they were the person that bowed the first, which I would have thought it was the other way around, but it wasn't. That person, I guess, for some reason in that culture, bows first, and then the other people would bow with them. But then they had such respect for one another that they would continue bowing, and they would continue doing this for a few minutes. And so it was very obvious to me that they were showing one another a lot of respect. I respect you. I'm here to greet you. Instead of handshakes, they were bowing. Now, you probably won't encounter that in your classroom, but you may because people move into the areas that you'll be teaching all the time. So just be aware that even sometimes body posture comes from one's culture. And gestures are also important to know. Uh, for instance, pointing sometimes in some cultures is very rude. In ours to point, it usually means that something is going on, but sometimes it's not rude. Sometimes we're pointing something out. Um, and notice that I pointed differently even with my hand. A point with a finger is often different than a point with an open hand as well. So even those subtle differences in gestures can make a difference not only within cultures but between cultures. And general appearance. Um, it, it is true that some cultures bathing is not as important, keeping clothes uh, perfectly ironed is not as important, or certain uh, cultural um, regalia or things that they wear because of their culture, even this kind of clothing with the Amish I think of, um, they oftentimes, you will never see Amish girls in a dress. Uh, oftentimes they'll wear, um, I don't know what that's called, on their head. What's that called? A prayer cap on their head. And they won't, you won't see them in public without that. And so knowing that people dress differently can help you understand that they're not odd or eccentric or different, but their culture might have some effect on that as well. So, 15 minutes, 12 minutes, something like that. I have to a quarter after. Great. Um, so let's talk a little bit about attending skills. Now we're going to go from what you observe to how you attend to people, how you pay attention to people, how you show them that you're listening to them. This is what you do. So let's talk about attending with people. Attending skills are the way you convey to a person that you are engaged or you're communicating with them. And attending helps do these things. It shows them respect, it builds rapport, it lets them open up communication and talk with you. If you're paying attention to them, they're more likely to talk to you. Have you ever been in a conversation with a person who 
you're talking with me as a person, but I'm kind of like surveying the room as you talk. And have you ever tried to hold a conversation with a person who does that? You know, after a while, you just kind of want to give up, don't you? You, you think, why should I keep talking to you? Because you're not even looking at me. And so attending skills are really attending, paying attention to the other person. Our nonverbal communication shows people that we are attending to them. It also, for students, models positive communication. Helps them know what is good attending skills for them. Because believe it or not, they watch us. They watch what we do. So I'm going to do a little quick activity so that you don't just sit this whole time. I'd like you to choose a partner, just somebody beside you. Don't, you know, don't try to choose somebody way across the room. Just even if you don't know the person, it's very quick and easy. But here's what I want you to do with your partner. One of you is A or person one and one of you is person two. And I want you, want person A, to just tell something fun you did recently. Surely you've done something fun recently. So tell about something you've done. And person number two, Use poor attending skills. We're going to talk about what those are in a minute, but don't look at the person. Don't really respond to them much, you know, hmm, instead of speak back. Uh, position your body so you're not directly looking at them. Uh, you might cross your arms. You might turn away a little bit. But do this just for a minute, and just do that right now if you would with a par partner. All right, if I get out of your attention. If you were the listener, if you were the person listening to the other person, what was difficult about this? If you were the person listening, yes? Well, I knew that I was consciously being rude, mm -hmm. so that was really difficult for me, mm -hmm. just sitting here doing this activity, mm -hmm. and then we discussed that afterwards. Good. <laughs> kind of an apology for yeah, yeah. me making you be rude. <laughs> I understand. Somebody else had something else to say, yes? Um, it just felt awkward to me, like, because like, what she was talking about was kind of interesting to me. So mm -hmm. Yeah, just trying to, you know, ignore it, but at the same time, I wanted to like, make conversation with her. Mm -hmm. Good. So it wasn't natural for you, and that's a good sign, because most of us wanting to be teachers are naturally people who communicate well. So it probably did feel really uncomfortable for most of us. What if you were the speaker? How did it feel for you? Yes. Really uncomfortable. I can feel myself getting hotter, because I knew he was pretending, well, he was not really interested in what I was saying. Even though you knew that he was yeah. told not to, it still was I uncomfortable. Was <laughs> Good. Good points. What else? Yes. Yes. Uh, I just didn't want to really say anything. I just briefly said so the only thing I did was, you know, because I didn't want to go into detail because I they were going to be listening. Right. Kind of shut you down a little bit. Good. Good point. What else? I mean, she wasn't looking at me, so I was like, no, you need to look at me. Yeah. I had a person do that. They were one of those that surveys the room as they're talking with you. And I would find myself trying to move around them to turn them so that their face was like looking into a wall. And they wouldn't do it. They kept, they kept turning their body to survey the room as I was doing it. It's really hard. I mean, I, I kind of play around with that because I'm interested in nonverbal communication. But as a teacher, you can see how if you're not attending to your students or to the parents, in a way that they feel you're attending to what they, and you're interested in what they have to say, you can see how that can shut them down and how it can break up communication. So let's talk about some positive um, ways of attending. Visually, look at them, convey interest with your eyes, show empathy, hold eye contact sensitively. Don't do things like stare or gaze off continually or break eye contact abruptly. You know, one of the worst things we can do is look at our watch real quickly when we're talking with a person. Oftentimes it's very innocent. We have to sometimes in this society. And yet, uh, when a person is talking, we're more likely to look at our watch when they're talking because we're thinking. But it's probably better that we look at our watch when we're talking. But it's probably better that we have a clock where we can see that we don't have to look at it and let them know that we're doing it. So try not to break off that eye contact abruptly. It gives them a message that you're not fully paying attention to them. And that's really important. Also, vocal qualities. These are, these are nonverbals, even though vocal speaking is verbal. Vocal qualities can be very nonverbal as well. And so keep in mind about your speech tone, your rate, your volume, your pauses. I'm a, I talk very fast. And I have to be aware that sometimes I talk too fast for people to catch up with what I'm saying. And I have to consciously slow myself down. It is a nonverbal thing, even though it's part of my verbal <coughs> talk.